What is going on everybody? Welcome to episode 26 of my Clean Bulk series and today I'm actually going to be doing a comparison between the deadlifts uh, and the rack pulls. I'm going to be going through the uh, pros and cons of each and I'm also going to be giving you my opinion on which one I uh, would be best off doing. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Starting with the deadlifts, this exercise is undoubtedly one of the best exercises you can do. It is the backbone to any great strength and conditioning training program. This is due to your ability to progressively overload on this exercise, not only leading the strength gains, but because it's a multi-joint compound movement that works two of your largest muscle groups in your body being your legs and your back, it is also shown to increase natural testosterone levels. With that being said, I will now like to move into the pros and cons of this exercise. Starting off with the pros, the deadlift provides a lot of carryover strength to most, if not all, of your other lifts. Whether you choose to perform the deadlift on your back day or your leg day, it's an obvious choice for those who are looking to build their raw pulling strength. Because the bar is lifted from the floor rather than a rack, the more muscles are actually recruited during the deadlift. Not only do you have to maintain a contracted core, but your forearms, back, and legs are all worked. Once the weight starts getting heavy, consider the use of a weightlifting belt to help increase the interabdominal pressure to help stabilize your spine. Also, lifting straps can come in very handy to eliminate your forearm grip strength from failing before your main muscles do. When performing deadlifts for reps, you can actually improve your cardiovascular endurance. Most people tend to want to program the deadlift in the lower rep range as a strength building exercise, but it can also be done in a higher rep range as a very effective muscle building and cardiovascular building exercise as well. A good way to incorporate higher rep deadlifts is during a deload week. Now moving on to the cons of the deadlift. The first is that it requires the use of good form to really perform the exercise effectively and optimally. This can take some time to learn, but it can take even more time to master. And people actually focus on adding weight to the bar before they really focus on lear learning and mastering the form. And this can lead to many issues, with injury being the most impactful one. Because of how taxing it is on your central nervous system and lower back, the more recovery time in between sessions may be needed. If you're not taking your nutritional needs seriously or your sleep requirements, then this can also impact your recovery, making it more difficult to progress with a deadlift by either adding reps, weight, or number of deadlift sessions, which can ultimately hold back your maximum amount of benefit that you can get from this exercise. And the final con is if you're prone to having back problems, then this exercise could aggravate a pre-existing condition and lead to an injury. For those who don't take the time to properly warm up and stretch things out after their workout by either performing foam rolling or light stretching, uh, it can actually accelerate your chances of experiencing an injury. Another limiting factor that could interfere with performing this exercise correctly are actually tight hamstrings. So make sure you address both of these issues before trying to jump into heavy deadlifts. If there was a substitute for the deadlift, then the rack pull would definitely be it. The main difference between the two is the starting position of the bar. Uh, unlike the deadlift, the rack pull is not a competitive powerlifting exercise, uh, but this doesn't mean it should be neglected, so let's go over the pros and cons of the rack pulls. Starting off with the pros, the first pro is because the bar is actually lifted from the rack, you're going to be able to load more weight on the bar, uh, meaning you're able to place more stress on your muscles, helping to stimulate some new growth. This ability to really overload can also help your central nervous system get adjusted to how heavy your weight feels, making for easier transitions when moving up in weight with all your other lifts. Since it only requires about half the range of motion that's needed in performing the deadlift, then the rack pull actually is more focused on targeting and developing your back thickness. This decrease in quad activation and increase in your back involvement can actually give this exercise an edge over the deadlift if your main goal is bringing up your back. With the rack pull, because it's less taxing on your central nervous system, then this could actually allow you to recover faster and ultimately lead to a quicker progression up in volume, meaning more sets and reps, and frequency, meaning number of rack pull sessions per week. This will actually allow you to hit your back more often with heavy sets, which could actually help lead to more overall back gains. Now moving on to the cons, because of the increased loading potential for the rack pulls, this can actually cause a lot of people to neglect the importance of good form by properly retracting their scapula at the end of the range of motion, which simply means pulling your shoulder blades in, and this incorrect use of form can actually create a considerable amount of tension on your neck and shoulders that it might not be used to uh, when you're doing it incorrectly, and over time can lead to a lot of pain or even an injury. From an overall muscle building perspective, the rack pulls aren't as effective because they are less of a total body exercise. This is because of the decreased leg and core involvement needed actually to perform the lift, uh, making the deadlift a better choice. And the final con is that exercises like this can be considerably disrupting to others in the gym because the bar constantly banging up against the rack. At least with a deadlift, you can set up pads to be placed underneath where the weights are going to be hitting the floor, or sometimes the gyms even have a specific deadlifting area. Uh, but with the rack pull, you, uh, you have no other choice but to do it from the rack. I think when you're just trying to decide which one you should perform, I think it all comes down to what your goals are. Um, I think the deadlift is honestly a better overall exercise because it hits more muscle groups. Um, it's kind of more of a total body exercise. Uh, but the rack pull, however, I feel like it's a better uh, exercise for really bringing up your back and building that back thickness. If you determine that your goals are more aligned to powerlifting, then I think deadlifting is a must. 
Um, and honestly, the, uh, the only way to really get good at deadlifting is to deadlift more. Um, and I think you have to really focus on your uh, your form to really make uh, make the exercise the most effectively. And if you're doing it for a competitive uh, powerlifting meet, uh, then you definitely want to make sure your form's in check. Um, so you definitely want to like film yourself or maybe even hire a coach. I'd say hiring a coach is 100% um, the best way to go. I mean, that's the only real way you're going to get somebody who has an experience doing it uh, to really see how your form looks. Um, but like I said, you can't do your deadlift at 100% all the time. Um, it's just too taxing on your body and too taxing on your central nervous system. Um, so I think that the rack pull uh, actually comes in handy for uh, powerlifting as well. If you're looking to try to uh, include it as like an accessory lift to your deadlift. So maybe one week you would uh, you'd come in and you would do your your deadlift and you'd focus on the deadlift progression and then you could actually use your rack pull um, to kind of, uh, you know, as an accessory lift to help build your deadlift. If your goals align more to bodybuilding, then I, I still think the deadlift should be a staple in your program. Um, it's the most effective exercise for building, uh, being able to progressively overload and building like a solid uh, foundational strength. Um, and the more that you're able to progressively overload and increase the strength with your deadlift, uh, it's just going to benefit every one of your uh, other exercises. But let's say you're a bodybuilder who kind of wants to work on his back. Uh, if your back's a weak point, uh, specifically your back thickness, then I don't feel like the deadlift is necessarily the most effective option uh, to really be uh, helping with that back thickness. And that's where the rack pull comes in. I feel like rack pulls are a better option for actually building your lower back, or not your lower back, but your upper back. Um, I just feel like it's uh, because it's less taxing on your central nervous system, you're able to perform it uh, more often, you're able to load it heavier. Um, so it's going to be more of a direct, um, because it eliminates the involvement with your legs, um, you're not lifting the bar up from the floor, you're able to actually take that uh, uh, out of your legs and actually direct it more towards your back. So I think for building back thickness, and if it's a weak point, I think it definitely is uh, more of an effective exercise in that regard. A good way to structure this in a training program is actually uh, through the use of periodization, uh, where you'd actually focus some weeks on just performing the deadlift, so like the deadlift uh, progression. And what you what you could do is you could come in and you could uh, aim to go four to six reps and kind of progress uh, up until you kind of feel your body, body like plateauing, I guess. And then you can almost take like a, not like a deload, but just like kind of like a couple of weeks where you're just focusing on doing the rack pulls. Um, and you're able to kind of perform that uh, in the heavy rep range as well. Um, and to make it even more interesting, you can even still perform the deadlifts. Um, maybe on, you can do rack pulls on your back days. And then on your leg days, you can do uh, deadlifts. But you could do the deadlifts in a higher rep range, so anywhere from like 10 to 12 reps. Um, and this would allow you to focus on maybe improving the speed of the deadlift off the floor. So you're really focused on pulling the bar and making the, uh, the speed the priority. Or you could just focus on like your form and just really kind of make sure you're, you're nailing your form. Uh, but these high reps will actually uh, benefit you in, in, in your endurance and it'll actually improve uh, the quality of your lift as well. Um, so I kind of like the way of structuring that. You're able to kind of focus on the deadlift progression and then once you plateau on that, move more into rack pulls. And this is kind of a good way of uh, integrating both of them uh, into your programming. Personally, for me, I've noticed a big difference in my track development from doing rack pulls uh, more consistently than I was doing deadlifts. I just kind of uh, focused on prioritizing them in my program um, to maybe eight weeks, and I honestly noticed a pretty quick change in my traps. Um, so I think that uh, rack pulls are definitely good for building your upper back, but also don't undermine the importance of deadlifts as well. I feel like those are uh, really great and they're the foundation of any great program. So you definitely want to, uh, you don't want to be just doing rack pulls all the time and not, and not incorporating deadlifts in some way. So definitely take my advice and kind of uh, do what I said with the periodized program. Maybe just try to implement uh, progression and deadlifts for a little bit uh, and then move on to uh, doing more rack pull focused uh, training. And I guarantee you'll uh, reap the benefits from both. Um, but yeah, like when I even went back to doing the deadlift um, after doing the rack pull consistently for a while, I actually noticed that the weight came off the floor a little bit easier. I feel like it primed my central nervous system from getting used to uh, handle all that weight pretty from doing those heavy rack pulls. Um, so honestly, I noticed the increase in my deadlift from doing the rack pulls. That's going to conclude this week's episode of my Clean Bulk series. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Uh, just to sum things up pretty quick, I think the deadlift is honestly the most, uh, the more effective exercise because of the uh, how uh, it's more of a total body exercise and you're actually able to uh, include more muscle groups into the one lift. Uh, but also, I think the rack pull definitely uh, serves a purpose into, uh, into some training programs. And I think that if you're looking to build up your back thickness, uh, then the rack pull is definitely the most uh, more effective exercise for just achieving. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, I got a lot of great content in the works and I'm definitely looking forward to putting out for you guys. So definitely, you definitely don't want to miss out all this content that I'm putting out. Um, yeah, and definitely follow my journey to the uh, to the bodybuilding stage. I'll be preparing for a bodybuilding show uh, next year. And I also put out, like I said, great motivational and educational 
style content. Uh, so yeah, definitely subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell notification as well. Um, I definitely want you guys to receive notifications for when I put out the new videos. Um, so make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell notification. And also like the video because it could also it could help expose somebody who's uh, interested in my type of content uh, to find my videos. So make sure you hit the like button as well. I also recently just started a new series on my channel, it's called Weak Point Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday I put in a video um, that might be a weak point, uh, that addresses a muscle group that might be a weak point in your physique. I go through its anatomy, I structure it in a training program. I also give you what I feel are the most optimal exercises, and I also give you a workout uh, that you can include and implement directly into your training. Um, so I've already covered the chest, and I've uh, covered the side delts. Um, so look out for the next one being Wednesday, and if you haven't seen those first two episodes, then definitely go give them a watch. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying doing that series as well. And a brand new fitness test is actually going to be released directly on my website, uh, which is going to be released tomorrow, Monday, October 14th. Um, for those who uh, don't know what my fitness tax is, it's a free weekly health and fitness blog that I post directly on my website, uh, which is marklewisfitness.ca. Uh, the last one that I did was on the importance of sleep as it relates to uh, fitness. So definitely go give that one a read. Uh, definitely a lot of, uh, I put a lot of great free content on my website. So uh, definitely keep checking uh, for different things that I post on there. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the update for the natural lifting program, uh, basically it's a program that I'm working on that's going to be periodized. It's going to be perfect for beginner to intermediate natural lifters. It's going to take out all the guesswork out of your training. Um, so I also uh, came up with a release date for that program. Uh, that's going to be Friday, November 8th. Um, so make sure you look out for that. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed it. And definitely uh, give the rack pulls a try if you haven't and try uh, doing it consistently in your programs. And I guarantee you'll, you'll see the results in your, uh, definitely your traps for sure. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it, and I hope everyone has a great day. Peace out.